Hey y'all, you're gonna start in a comfortable seat and stretch your legs out in front of you. You might put a block underneath your knee um, of the extended leg, the left leg. You'll wind your right fingers in between your right toes. You can position your leg in a way that makes sense for your hips. That might be with the ankle crossed over the thigh. It might be with your leg just kind of hanging out. It depends on what makes sense for your hips. Try not to hunch. You can keep your sternum lifting. You might have to boost your butt up a little bit higher to do that. And you'll circle your ankle, point and flex your foot. You can hold your left hand on your heel as you're moving. And unwind your fingers. Just wrap them over your toes. And use your hand to point and flex your toes. After being crammed in skates, I'll probably feel good. Take both thumbs. Begin to massage the arch of your foot. So whatever part of that feels like it needs a little love, especially on your right foot. As you're leaning into that often, the arch side, you might want to get a little more attention in there. It might also feel a little bit crunchy, which means probably needs it. Take a few more rounds of massaging. And as you finish up, stretch your right leg forward, slide the block underneath that knee or book or towel, and interlace your left fingers in between your left toes. Again, might be hard to do. Your feet get crammed into skates and shoes a lot. And you'll use your left hand and your right hand to move your foot. If you need to adjust your fingers in between your toes, you can do that. Circle your ankle, point and flex. Again, have your left position in a way that makes sense for your hips. Or you feel like you can stay seated. And then you'll unwrap your fingers from in between your toes, take them over your toes and use your hand to point and flex your foot. It's a little massage for your foot, a little movement. Get two thumbs up, start to slide them along the sole of your foot. And I'm contorting my leg into weird positions that you can see. Yours doesn't have to do that. In fact, it probably won't. Set yourself up in a way that makes sense for you. Give yourself a little foot massage. Wiggle your toes, and you'll make your way up to standing. Once you come on up to standing, you'll roll up your blanket or towel. So whatever you've got that you were sitting on, you'll make it into a roll. You might just roll it part of the way. You'll be able to play around with that when we get there. For now, just set it off to the side so it's ready to go. Come to standing. Have your feet about hip width apart. You're going to be moving your toes. So give your legs a little shake out, get settled down on your feet and start to pick up right big toe, place it back down, left big toe, place it back down, right big toe, place it back down, left big toe, place it back down. You're trying to only pick up your big toes, not the other ones. So they all might move together and that's fine. Now you'll try to pick up just the other four toes, place them back down. Just the other four left toes, place them back down. One will probably be easier than the other. It might be one foot, it might be one toe. It depends on how you use your feet. You use them differently on your skates. And then just pick them up, put them down, do a little shake out. Pick up all your toes and place just your big toes towards the floor and just your pinky toes towards the floor and then both big toes and pinky toes. Pick up all your toes, spread them apart. Just big toes, just pinky toes down, and then big toes and pinky toes down. And then pick all your toes up again. Give them a little wiggle around. Set yourself up at the back of your mat. Begin to slowly walk forward to the front of your mat. Try to articulate through your entire foot. So start with heel and then place it down a little bit at a time all the way to toes. Pick up from your heel, lift up onto your toes. So it's just a slow walk where you let your foot move through its full motion. Really paying attention to how you walk. Then once you step your feet next to each other, start picking up from your heel and placing from toe to heel to walk backwards. Okay, it's just that full articulation. I'm going to try and pick up as slowly as you can. A little 
movements as much as you can and place your feet back down. Each part of your foot touching down slowly and separately. Once you finish at the back of your mat, you can move to the middle of your mat. You're going to set yourself up with feet about hip width apart to play with where you rest your weight in your feet. So a lot of us tend to rest weight in the fronts of the feet, especially from skating. You come into that squat, there's a little lift of your heels or your skates. So you tend to be in your derby stance, leaning a little bit forward. So what you want to play around with doing is trying to drive a little more weight into your heels when you're standing. So a mirror would be helpful for this or taking a photo or getting someone to take a photo. The reason that you want to try and drive a little more weight into your heels as you stand is because it's extra strain on your knees when you do that lean forward. And you know it's already happening from skating. So try not to have it happen the rest of your life. So you'll take those rocks, some rocks forward and back. Notice your weight as it's in your toes, as it's in your heels. And try to find the place where you feel like your weight is resting evenly. You might pick up your toes as you do that to help press weight down. Through balls of feet, big toe mounds, pinky toe mounds, and centers of heels. And you can just do a little, little jog in place, a little movement for your legs and feet. And bring yourself to standing again. Try to find that weight balance. You're going to take some calf raises from here. So you'll inhale to lift all the way up onto the balls of your feet as high up as you can get. And exhale to lower. I'm trying to keep your rib cage drawn in. You'll notice I'm not arching my back, moving my spine. It's literally just a lift up and down. So do your best to have everything else stay as it is. Just get that lift up and down. Lift your heels, lift up onto the balls of your feet, and lower your heels back down. Move up and down with your breath. Your inhale lifts you, exhale lowers you. And then with your heels still on the ground, try to feel that same action through your legs. As you inhale, feel that action of lifting. As you exhale, feel that press down through your heels. It's obviously not something that's easy to demonstrate, but see if you can feel it after doing a bunch of those calf raises to get some strength and support around your ankles. You can give your feet a little movement, a little shake out. And I'll turn to the side so you can see the next thing. You're going to pick up onto the toes of your right foot and circle that right ankle. Get a little movement, a little stretch. Circle in one direction and then the opposite direction. Again, just checking in with mobility. So we're looking for both stabilizing and mobilizing. You don't just want to be stiff. You need to also be able to move. You got to be able to change directions. Good. Lift up onto the left toes and again, begin to circle that ankle first in one direction. You're also getting a little hip circling there as well. And follow it up with the opposite direction. You're trying to move with your breath in whatever way. You're trying to keep your hips stable. That's why I got my hand on my right hip so it doesn't just push out to the side. You're breathing. Place both feet down. Now you'll grab that blanket roll. Bring it to front of your mat. You can have the rolled part on the mat. The rest of it can hang off. We'll step your feet apart into a pyramid type shape. So your left foot's forward, right foot's back. And you'll play around with lifting your left foot up to make sure that you're driving weight down through your right foot. Because both your legs need to be able to support your weight. You don't just want one leg doing all the work. There's a time and place where one leg will, not always. Feel belly button drawn towards your spine. Feel your left hip pull back a little bit so you're not just letting that hip push forward and begin to fold. Doesn't matter how deep you fold. You want to keep support around your midsection. You'll slowly lift back up. You want left knee pointing forward as you're doing this. You don't want it pointing over towards your right side. So that's where that pullback of your left hip comes in handy to keep that knee pointing directly forward. It can always be a bend in that knee. But you don't want it to drop inward. Switch sides, left foot steps partway back on your mat. I usually say about halfway if you're standing at the front of your mat. You can feel your right hip draw back, left hip forward. Both sets of toes are pointing fairly forward so that your hips are square and your knees aren't at risk. 
Again, play around with lifting up that right foot, seeing if you can balance on your left foot or if there's enough weight in your left foot. And again, begin to fold. Right knee can be bent a little bit or more than a little bit. You breathe. It does not matter how far you fold. The goal isn't like, I'm going to get my head to my toes. Just moving and breathing and checking in. And again, you'll step right foot back. So swap sides. This is time to set up for warrior two. So play around again with that pop up of your left foot. Make sure there's weight pushing down through your right foot. That's to get a sense of like, do I have all my weight in my left foot? Left knees bent, right toes point off towards the side, a little bit towards your left foot. And then again, feel your left hip draw down. It's like you're trying to tuck your sits bone under. A little scoop to get your glutes involved. You know, that butt. Left arm rests on your left thigh. There's weight down through your right foot. You could pick up your left toes so you feel that weight pressing your left heel. So it's not all about just quads doing the work. Right foot comes forward, left foot back. And again, you'll bend your front knee and feel that right hip pull down and back. So you might have to spin your left toes, left leg in a little bit more. That's fine. It means that you're using your glutes and you need that booty. You need it to do that work on the track and, you know, in life. So right arms resting softly on your forearm, left arm stretched alongside your left ear. You could look down because your neck doesn't need to hold you up right here. It's not its job. And breathe. Step left foot up to join your right and back to standing. And now you're going to get to finally use that rolled up blanket or towel. So move blocks out of the way so you can see. You're going to have your heel on the floor, right foot forward, left foot back, that first pyramid shape. And you can curl your toes over the blanket roll. Now, once you put your foot there, you might go, this needs to be a little thicker or a little bit thinner. Because you don't, it's a little massage for your arch, a little massage for your foot, but without putting too much pressure. You don't want your right hip spinning forward too much. You don't want your right knee pointing inward. So again, you don't want the knee pointing off towards the left. You want to move from your hip, use your glutes, booty, to keep that knee pointing out in the same train track as your toes. So that little pullback of your right hip helps and the right knee can be bent. And you'll begin to fold. You'll breathe as you fold. You might place hands down on blocks or books or a coffee table. You might stack them up real high. You could use your couch. You might just keep your hands on your hips. But it's nice to have a little extra for the balance here. And you can wiggle your toes around as you're there. Pick them up, put them down. Notice what feels like what. And step your left foot forward. You'll step it onto the blanket. Again, try to have your heels on the floor. Foot wrapping over that rolled up piece of fabric. Knees are a little bent. Check in with your glutes. Make sure there's a little draw back. And you'll place a block or book in between your shins. You'll squeeze against that as you fold. Hands could rest on your coffee table, end table, blocks, books, whatever you got there to rest your hands on. That allows your spine to stay at a neutral position. You're not rounding it a ton. Again, not trying to get your toes at all costs because like that's not actually a measure of health. It's a thing that they had us do, but it's it doesn't prove anything about your body. Slowly lift yourself up and step your right foot back to that pyramid shape. And again, you might stack up your blocks. Do that little check-in with back toes that they're pointing kind of forward. There's a weight in your back foot. Front knees a little bit bent. Left hips drawing back. Front hip. And you fold your torso towards the floor. And you breathe. Your left heel's on the floor. Your left foot's wrapped over that blanket or towel. And you'll slowly lift up. Both feet come to your blanket. Take one of those blocks or a book in between your shins, between your calves. You can squeeze against that as you fold. Take a few breaths in that fold. Allow yourself to rest there. 
and you'll get set up now for warrior two. Start with your right foot forward on the blanket roll, left foot back. Again, you'll spin your left toes in a little bit so that your left hip can spin in a little bit without jeopardizing your knee. That way you can get your right glutes to pull back towards the back of your mat and down to activate them. Right forearm on your left thigh, left arm alongside your left ear or behind your back if you want a little break for your shoulder. Maybe wiggle your toes around a little bit. Hands to your hips. And you'll swap to the other side. Left foot forward, right foot back. And we're working on all that kind of stability and some movement around the ankle too. And the foot. And left heels down. You can wiggle your toes around. Left hip is drawing back a little bit so you feel like your thigh bone is really plugged into that hip socket. Take a few breaths hanging out there. And make your way off of that blanket roll. You can place it off to the side for now. Make your way down to your knees. And you'll unroll and fold it up. So it's folded about the thickness that you were sitting on earlier. I'm going to use this to support you as you lie down. So you want to get around your hip points at the bottom edge of that blanket, possibly even off the bottom edge of that blanket. So it's under your belly, not under your pelvis. Bend your left knee, reach your left hand back to find your left foot. And you want to move your arm so that your fingertips are pointing towards your ankle and your toes are around the palm of your hand or wrist. If this is feeling like too much to hold for your shoulders, you can always be on your side and do the same thing. You want to try and have your hand getting that press there so that you get a little stretch for the front of your ankle. You can also use a strap as appropriate or skate noose. You would just use it to help draw that ankle into that extension so that it's not toes aren't pulling up towards your knee. Swap to the other side. It'll take your right hand to your right foot. And again, you're pointing your fingertips down towards your ankle, drawing in. So again, you get that stretch for the front of your ankle. And you breathe. You can always do this on your side. It doesn't have to be on your belly if that's feeling like too much for your back. Move your ankle around a few circles. Just let it get a little movement and release. And there you'll make your way onto your back, slide that blanket out of the way. You can slide your blocks out of the way as well. Arms rest by your sides. And as you lift up for bridge, You'll imagine your shins reaching forward rather than just going like, I'm going to pick my hips up because that's what we often do is try to thrust our hips up towards the ceiling. You'll reach your shins forward and then play around with balancing on your heels, balancing on toes or balls of feet. It's taking a little movement once you're in that bridge shape. And you'll move with your breath. Partly so that you keep breathing steadily because sometimes we forget to do that. Release your hips down. Bring your right knee in, clasp around the back of your right thigh. Again, use your strap or towel to help hold your leg up. And begin to circle your right ankle. And point and flex your foot. So you're moving through that point and flex really slowly like we walked earlier. So you bring back your toes, so you're like in a high heel, then press up through ball of your foot, then press out through your heel. So you pause at that kind of awkward like Barbie foot shape. Then place your right foot down, clasp around your left thigh. Again, circle your ankle a few times, let it kind of rock or sway, a little movement. Then you'll go through that flexing, toes pull back towards your knee, pointing the Barbie foot, and then pointing. Then go through the opposite action. So it's that slow kind of movement through the range of motion, the foot. And release your left foot down. Stretch your legs out towards the front of your mat, back of your mat, whichever you want to call it. Stretch your legs out. You might take your blanket underneath your knees. 
and let your arms rest by your sides. Take a few moments to pause and breathe. Let your feet rest. Let yourself hang and be still. And if you have a hard time just being still, count. It's a slow, steady count. As you're ready to start moving again, and there's no rush, no hurry. Stay here as long as you want. You'll roll yourself over onto one side and make your way up to a comfortable seat.